January here in Spokane, Washington, but we are finally getting into the teeth of the West Coast Conference season. The students are back, fans are back, and we welcome you back as the Gonzaga Bulldogs rank number 20 in the country this week take on the Santa Clara Broncos, who gave Portland a real scare earlier in their road trip a couple nights back. Great to see you this afternoon with Connor Gilbert. I'm Greg Talbot, and Connor, Zags on an eight-game winning streak, ranked number 20 in the country, one of the hottest teams in America. People have been so busy talking about their offense, but really their defense has been sensational, starting with Michaela Williams. Yeah, Michaela Williams is an anchor on defense. She's always being put on the other team's highest score, and she's just really coming her own this year as a lengthy, versatile defender. She's great on ball screens pretty much doing everything you need her to do in terms of defensive utility. Take a look at that grab on your screen. The last three games, she held the leading scores on opposing teams at or below their season scoring average. But she's going to have her hands full this afternoon with Tess Heel for Santa Clara, who is pretty much a lock for WCC Freshman of the Year. Absolutely. A five-time WCC Freshman of the Week. Uh, last week, National Player of the Week by the U.S. Basketball Rise Association. Leading the team in scoring and assists. She makes her living in the paint. Uh, she's very great at just all levels of scoring and she's just a competitor and she is kind of the driving force whenever uh, San uh, De Clara is making a move. So the Zags are the favorite this afternoon, no doubt about it, but this Santa Clara team put a scare into Portland the other night back. They have seven players who have scored more than 10 threes this year. They're a good team. We'll see what they can do to the Zags after this on the WCC Network today on Stadium. Again, Santa Clara ready to do battle in just a couple of seconds here in Spokane. Let's get ready to show you this afternoon's starting lineups. And for the Santa Clara Broncos, obviously, Connor, everyone talks about Tess Heel, but Olivia Pollard has really been on one recently. Yeah, she, uh, the UW transfer in the middle of a breakout year after getting practically no minutes uh, in Seattle last season, uh, leading the league in blocks and the team in blocks, and uh, second with rebounds and third in points. She has been part of their big patent presence along with Edmondson and uh, Heal and allows them to be pretty consistent. Yeah, she's come on strong, no doubt. As for the Gonzaga Bulldogs, Brenda Maxwell did not have a big game last time out, but she is the best three-point shooter in college basketball. She's got a beautiful quick release. Uh, like you said, a low-scoring night uh, by her standards, only five points against USF. Uh, they're able to figure out a way without her, but she has been their most consistent deep threat, and it's so easy to give her the ball and know what you're getting out of her. Well, the Zags still tied for first place in the West Coast Conference coming into this one. They in Portland both undefeated at 5-0 at the moment. Santa Clara came into this season thinking they would be a little bit better off than they are. They are 1-3 on the year. That said, those weren't 
bad losses. Two of those were to USF and Portland. Yeah, a pair of heartbreakers by one score. And Portland, they had to withstand 15 made three. So a program record for Portland. The best shooting night probably in a couple seasons at home. And they only lost by 10. They were able to make up a big uh, deficit in the first half, even though they made 11 threes in the first half. So they're pretty resilient. And I think that they're a lot better than one and three. No doubt about it. This is a team that just got... I would say unlucky on scheduling early in the year to have USF, Portland, and then number 20, Gonzaga. Three of those in four games. That's just unfortunate for them. Yeah. But overall, I think that they're a really well-balanced team. They minimize their turnovers. They have fewest turnovers per game in the league. Pollard into tip against Egem, and Vani takes it away. Here comes Kaylin Trong, and we're off and running here in Spokane in front of a pretty big crowd this afternoon, Connor. Yeah, this is the biggest crowd I've seen in a few weeks. This is great. You love the atmosphere here in Spokane. Yeah, I would say minus the BYU game a couple weeks back. This has been the biggest as Ejim puts up the first shot of the afternoon. It does not go down. Vani coming off a big game against USF. She had 15 and 12, yet another double-double. That has become increasingly common for her as the year has gone on. It's been cool to see how she can score on like all levels this year, and she's gotten so much more run with what she can do. No doubt. Will she try again? No, she had Edmondson on her, and here comes Trong off the screen. Bang! Kaylin Trong. Trong has been asked to do. Kaylee has been out, as there's the first points of the game for Santa Clara, but Kaylin Trong, man, so not only did she take over as point guard, she has kept up as the team's leading scorer. It's amazing that she's been able to do both. It's been cool to see like her confidence grow as the season's gone on too. I think it really started in that Bahamas tournament when she really actually had to fill in on short notice. Bombs away, Michaela Williams. We were just saying uh, at the beginning of the broadcast, Connor, that she's known for her defense, but she can shoot it too. She just is usually busy guarding the best offensive player on the other team like she is right here with Tess Hill. Yeah, and she can handle the ball too. I think that she's become really reliable in terms of when they need like stops. Great give and go. Pollard down low for two. Sometimes the old school plays are the best. Nothing wrong with the give and go. That was a great backdoor cut. All right, so Santa Clara answering early on here against this Gonzaga team. And boy, are the Bulldogs feeling good as they start to get to the meat of the West Coast Conference schedule. 15 and 2, 5 and 0 in conference play. Tied for first in the league with Portland on an eight game winning streak. If you're not going to contest that, she's going to keep taking those all day. So that's already a couple threes that have gone down for the Zags. Three three-pointers. They have only shot from outside and made shots from outside in the first couple minutes of this one. Maybe not a surprise, the Zags are the third-best three-point shooting team in America. You heard that right. The Zags shoot 41% as a team from downtown. That's the third-best clip in college hoops. And that's what's made them so prone to explosions like that. Another one. They're four, on for fire. Four, they're four for four from downtown. And look at Callie Stokes ending up on the floor. Oh, man, it's going to be a party this afternoon. More threes, except they're not going down from Santa Clara. They're 0 for 2 from outside early on. And Santa Clara's no slouch when it comes to threes, too. Man, Santa Clara's going to want a timeout. And look at that. There's a whistle. They'll take it. Gonzaga is five for six shooting in the first couple of minutes. And Folks and McCarthy are starting to get lively. Wow, 14 to four. Gonzaga has opened up a double digit lead, not even five minutes into this ball game. They are four for four from downtown. Santa Clara needs a break and they'll get it on the WCC network. Come on back.
Well, Santa Clara is a good team. Make no doubt about it. They put a scare into Portland. They put a scare into USF the other night. But then they come to the kennel to open up a Saturday afternoon game, and the Bulldogs are just bombs away, Connor, four for four from downtown, and an early 10-point lead because of it. And that's the, one of the nation's best three-point shooting teams. Uh, like I said earlier, it's what makes them prone to these offensive explosions uh, in quarters. But I think really the best thing about uh, the reason they've been on this eight-game winning streak is because they have a great uh, lineup to close out games. So we're gonna we're gonna see how Santa Clara responds here. We will see how they do. The Broncos ten and seven after their slow start to the WCC year. Bombs away from them. That's Ashley Maldonado wouldn't go down. Tipped away. It'll be Zag Ball. Well, it's not a surprise though, Connor, that Santa Clara, even though they are not making their threes, they've already tried three. What is it? They have seven players who have more than ten three pointers this year. So. Unlike the Zags, who have a couple real bombs away players in really Maxwell. Speaking Another. Of that, just going to say Maxwell that leads the country in threes. There's also Trong and Hollingsworth. Santa Clara, on the other hand, everyone shoots threes. It's just a different way to do it. Yeah, everyone has the green light, and that's part of the reason why they're in the upper half of the conference in terms of three-point percentage. Everyone is pretty versatile on this on this team. Everyone likes to penetrate from multiple levels. They're trying to move it, but the Zags are closing out tight on defense. There goes Heel, nearly got her own rebound, and Strong recovers. Man, oh man, what a start to this game. First three that does not go down, but Hollingsworth there for the rebound. Wants to go back up, and she'll reset for Kaitlyn Strong. She had. 17 points against USF the other night. Also, Connor, career high, nine assists. Yeah, and it's shown that like she's been able to do both. Typically, with when there's Kaylee in the game, one of them is more shifting to the distributor route, and one of them is shooting more. But Kaylin has kind of shown that she can really do both and keep charge of the offense, and she, I feel like she's gotten better as the year's gone on. This is really remarkable. Five threes and one two-pointer. Santa Clara's trying to make up the gap with threes, but it's not going to work that way. They're still 0 for, 0 for 4 from downtown compared to Gonzaga's 5 for 6. Hill trying to work on Williams, and Michaela gets whistled for the first time. And the shots aren't falling, but Santa Clara's getting a lot of offensive boards here. You can see Destiny Burton came into the game probably to help with, you know, getting those boards back. We'll take a look at that. You get free tacos here in the kennel if you have... 10 three-pointers in the game. We're five minutes in. Zags are halfway there. Won't go from Santa Clara. Down low, Pollard trying to corral it. Can't do it. Man, oh, man, Santa Clara was not ready for whatever this game plan was by the Zags. This is a team, by the way, that has Eliza Hollingsworth and Yvonne Ejim, two of the best post players in the Pacific Northwest. And all of a sudden, it's just... Shooting threes. Yeah. And one of the cool things about Eliza is that like she really used to be more of like staying outside, kind of a strictly a shooter. And she has a lot of size, but she's really learned how to use that this year, and it's been huge for them. She can also shoot free throws. So like she's a, someone late game that you can count on. If they're going to draw a foul, it's pretty safe. And yeah, that was Destiny Burton doing it for the Zags. They're seven for nine from the field early on. We have a foul. Looked like Trong was just going to steal that one away, though. Two fouls against the Zags already, none against Santa Clara, about five and a half minutes into this one. Here comes Heel. No, they've still kept her scoreless early on. This one goes back to GU. All right, Connor, if you're Santa Clara, you've got to get Tess Heel going. She's your leading scorer, but clearly whatever the Zags are doing on defense is making it hard for her to get around the rim, which is where she finishes. If you're them, how do you open it up? I think that Gonzaga is taking some leaves out of Portland's book. She scored 19 in the first half against Portland uh, in their last game, and then only four in the second half. And they really were just keeping her out of her sweet spots. She's still a freshman, and she she's comfortable where she's comfortable. 
The Zags are eight for 10 from the field after Maxwell gets the jumper to go down. The rare one for her inside the three-point line. And that finally for Santa Clara breaks the scoring drought. The Zags had been on a 15 to two run. It's interesting to say, see Muma in the game this early. She only had five minutes in the last game and she's pretty much acted as like the reserve point guard, but it's, it's cool to see her getting more minutes. Here she goes. Off the bank was open. Ejim second chance. No. Goes bouncing around. Santa Clara is going to take it. I got to tell you though, I'm kind of Peyton Muma's number one fan, even though she just got beat on defense. I love seeing her get the minutes because she is the next point guard. Yeah, she she kind of reminds me of when Katie Campbell like first came into the program, mm, and she sure. she told Katie Campbell told me once like she would get subbed in, and Lisa would say, "I need you to play defense." Mm. And Muma plays really hard. And she doesn't make bad decisions, which is all you can ask for. Especially out of a young point guard. Yeah. She'll try again. There we go. And she gets it that time. <laughs> Got to tell you, it's so fun to see different people in this fan base, Connor, who come to these games, have been coming for decades, and the different players they fall in love with. I cannot tell you, last year, even though Peyton Muma wasn't playing, right? She was redshirting. There were a bunch of people who I would talk to here at the games who would say she was still their favorite player to watch just because of how animated she was on the bench. Yeah, and it says a lot about uh, what kind of player you are. Like, if you're not, she, I don't think she appeared in the game last year, but she always brought the energy. She and Callie were always fired up on the bench. And it kind of adds, like, to the team's energy as a whole. It's, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't say that that's not beneficial. No doubt, good rebound. Down low by the Broncos, and they'll try to figure out a way to get to double digits here. They are two for 10 in their last 10 shots. Now Stokes on heel is interesting, because Stokes is, an, uh, is a bigger guard, and she's really strong and physical, and I think that's why they're keeping Williams and Callie on, uh, on heels, so they can kind of corral her out of the paint and force her into those mid-range or off the side shots. Eliza Hollingsworth back in for the Zags. And they'll let Trong continue to rest on the bench and have Muma play point guard with Stokes at the two. So this is, make no mistake, there is a chance that both of the Trong twins come back to Spokane next year. If they don't, it's going to be, in all likelihood, Peyton Muma at point guard, and here she comes. Callie Stokes at the two, and maybe Salenbein at the three? Yeah, Salenbein provides kind of the same benefits. Uh, she's longer, and she can defend a lot of different players, and she's got a sweet stroke. Oof. Callie thought she was going to get fouled that time. Didn't end up happening for her. Here comes Hudgens. Good movement to Pollard. Also can't connect. Bad shooting day for Santa Clara here in the first quarter. With about a minute left to go in it, they are shooting 33% as a team and 0 for 6 from 3. That being said, they weathered pretty much an equally bad half against Portland and were able to get back within 6 by half. Great steal. Great knock away. And here comes Hudgens the other way. All the way to the 10. No foul. They're letting him play. Oh, that's fun. But I'll stay with the Broncos. Strong and Williams will check back in. I, I got. I admire the aggression there, right? She knows they've got to get points. Yeah, she's got to take it to the rack. They have to get something going. Problem for Santa Clara is, is if they're trying to get to the line, they're not going to win a game of trying to get to the line with the Bulldogs because the Zags are, what, the third best free throw shooting team in the country. And... Santa Clara hasn't gotten double-digit free throw attempts against D1 opponents this year. No. They typically get five or six free throws a game. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Zags will slow it down. Five-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. One of the best offensive units in the country. What will they try? Good movement. Esther Little down low, five to shoot. Got to get rid of it. And draws the foul. No, three in the three seconds. Yeah, she really had nowhere to go there. So Santa Clara has a chance to bring it up and try to get a few more points on the board. Maldonado to the corner. 
That was Pritchard. She got it up and in in time. At the end of 10 minutes, Gonzaga started really hot, but now here comes Santa Clara. Bulldogs 24, Broncos 10 at the end of one. Come on back on the WCC Network on Stadium. We get a nice big crowd this afternoon here inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. They're mostly Zag fans, so they are mostly happy. 10 minutes in, Zag's on top of Santa Clara, 24 to 10. Connor Gilbert, man, how did that happen? Just threes? Practically just threes, uh, but Santa Clara needs to limit those opportunities. Like, not hedging out on Kalen is a big mistake. Unbelievable block by Esther Little, and no surprise, Connor. You know, Esther, she started the season not playing a ton. Recently, they've expanded her role, and she's become a really dependable defensive player off the bench. Yeah, part of that is because of the injuries, but also, like, she's kept her spot because she's a long physical guard, and that's kind of, like, what a lot of this lineup has been. She's been pretty interchangeable with a lot of those other players. What's fun for her is because pretty much everyone else on this team can and does score in double figures a lot. It allows her to just focus on defense, and you can focus on defense when you have gals like Eliza Hollingsworth taking big shots. And and she's a great rebounding guard, too. Most of the time, she's has someone defending her who's undersized, and it helps her a lot. All right, by the way, with the foul on the floor, that's on Ejim. In case you just tuned in today here on the WCC Network, the Zags in the first quarter were six for eight from downtown as a team. They've now made seven after that last one from Hollingsworth. We might have free tacos for everybody by the end of the first half. Yeah, we got three, three different players attempting multiple threes in the first, practically the first quarter. That's a good Zags takeaway. Strong stole it away and then got fouled. Other interesting notes from the end of the first quarter as we start the second. Zags already into double digit rebounds, already eight assists. And the easy number to tell you, Zags shooting 60% as a team. Santa Clara, half of that, 30. And Heel held to one of four shooting. And in the first quarter against Portland, and she was five for six. Strong back in, so Peyton Muma, the backup point guard to the bench, but she'll see more minutes before the half is out. Hollingsworth, oh, that would have been a deep one. Little steps in. Try to move it around. Strong. Man. Only the third one they've missed today. Still some great ball movement, though. You, you still like to see that. Pretty stuff. Zags always looking for threes as a team. They're the third best as a team in college hoops. They shoot 41 as a group. 
All right, welcome to the party, Olivia Pollard, the 6'3 sophomore from Australia. You were talking about her, Connor, before the game. You like her a lot. Yeah, I, I, I like that she's been able to form this role here and uh, after that year at UW, and she's part of what gives them such a strong post presence. You have her and Edmondson and Heal, and they all kind of make their living in the paint, but the Edmondson and Pollard are both, like you mentioned, they have the green light, and so they're able to stretch out defenses a lot. Speaking of the post, that was Michaela Williams for the Zags. She's got five points of their first 29. Here's Tess Heal, their leading scorer. She has not been able to get going yet today. This will stay with Santa Clara. So Tess Heal, there she is below the basket. She's definitely going to be the West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year at this point. She's leading the team in scoring 16 and a half a game. She shoots 52%. She plays 32 minutes at big games for them. And as, San as she goes, Santa Clara goes for the most part. She's able to help them overcome a lot of their uh, flaws. Lucky for her that time, she ended up not allowing Trung to make the basket, and she was just physically there on the ground for the rebound. It's great recovery on defense, too. She could have pushed that. She gets credit for the board, too, from, <laughs> from the ground. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, here she is. Boy, was she good against Portland, 23 points. Pollard for three. Nope. I'll tell you, it's hard to shoot a three over Eliza Hollingsworth. Yeah, it, that's the benefit that she brings, too. She can, she can recover pretty quickly. Stokes to Williams. And they'll try it again here with 10 on the shot clock. Ejim been quiet so far. That was a good move to the rim either way. She's so strong and unafraid. One of the fun things is he Heel finally gets going here for Santa Clara. I think I'm with you. One of the most things about Vani is that from last year to this year, I think the biggest difference is that she there's just no fear. Yeah, and she'll, she'll go into the paint sometimes and I think that this not an advantageous situation, but no one can strip the ball from her and she's able to alter a lot of shot contests just with her physicality. Uh, that was Jade Cuddy who definitely got tangled up and kind of accidentally shoved Callie Stokes there. Callie had her arms in the air calling for the foul and the refs will give it to her. Already three fouls on Santa Clara in the first four minutes of the second quarter. And that's not a recipe for trying to get back into this game. That's Brenna Maxwell for the Zags. Back into the fold already, seven points. And there she is on defense, fouling. Second of the quarter for GU. Foul called number 22 in the Bulldogs, Maxwell. It's been cool to see Maxwell get more into the mid-range shots as the year goes on too. No kidding, everyone obviously talks about two things for Maxwell, the free throw shooting and the three point shooting, but she's rounded out her game. Here's Lexi Pritchard. Santa Clara, a team that, even though they're rooted down in the Bay Area and have been for over 100 years at this point, uh, they recruit pretty heavily from the Pacific Northwest. Pritchard is from West Lynn, Oregon. That's one of the Portland suburbs. And always really good basketball teams down at that high school, too. Anna Johnson checks in for Santa Clara. And here comes Trong. Feels like the game slowed down the last couple of minutes here, Connor, as Santa Clara's got it going. Yeah, I also think this is a good thing for Gonzaga, too, because the amount of threes they were taking probably isn't sustainable. You have to find some kind of rhythm where you're not chucking up a three as often as you are, even if you're making them at the rate you are. Everyone knows that, you know, numbers fall down to earth and basketball's a game of runs. True, or true things never said. Uh, Gonzaga started this game 6 for 8 from downtown. They're now 7 for 11. So you do the math. Second quarter has not been as great. Stokes playing aggressive defense on Pritchard out top. Want to go again. And that one goes down for Santa Clara. That's Lara Edmondson, one of the four Australians in their rotation who not only plays all the time but gets threes. A lot of Australians just between these two teams today, Connor. Yeah, and uh, 
Heel and Pollard are both from Melbourne, which is known as the kind of basketball epicenter yeah. in Australia. That was a rare missed three from Brenda Maxwell. Heel all the way, no foul on Ejim. And the second chance is good from Edmondson. She's got their last That's five points. See, this is, they, they're starting to assert themselves more, driving to the paint, not try, not driving to the paint looking to kick it out. Uh, they, they should be trying to draw fouls here. Heard the crowd briefly there, trying to get some momentum back in this building. They were getting loud. Broncos on a 7-0 run. And that may continue after the missed three from Maxwell. Broncos have made five of their last seven. I'm curious, if Maxwell's numbers hold up, do, does she become known as possibly the best shooter in Gonzaga women's basketball history? Well, let's talk about her and talk about that on the other end of the break. Zag's still holding on to a lead, but now it's single digits. Come on back. Well, the Zags started this game and pretty much held on until the last few minutes with a non-stop double-digit lead. Santa Clara's cut into it, but Brenda Maxwell finally warming up here, Connor, and if she gets going, uh, Santa Clara's not going to have a chance. Yeah, she's already having a better game than she did against uh, San Francisco, and she's been more willing to take shots from different places. There she is hanging out in the corner where she loves to lie in wait to bomb away threes. And the freshman, Tess Heel, has the unenviable task of guarding her. Meanwhile, Kaylin Tron. What a beautiful scoop that was. And that ends a 7-0 run for Santa Clara. That was Lexi Pritchard trying another three. Santa Clara continues to try the threes, unfortunately for them. Uh, they're only shooting 20% on the day. They're two for 10 from downtown, which is weird, Connor, because seven of their players have more than 10 threes this year. Usually, they're pretty good from outside as Maxwell steals it away. Yeah, I don't really have an issue with that shot take. That's They should have made Gonzaga pay for not getting back on that. Zags, meanwhile, have put up 13 threes already. Hollingsworth just battling in the paint right now. Williams, jump stop and a two. And that's the benefit of her being a, a lengthy ball handler. Yep, seven early points. This game is on the road to being one of the higher scoring games we've seen this year in this building. Yeah, and it's after a kind of bounce back game. I mean, they scored 96 points against LMU and then barely cracked 60 against San Francisco. So funny, that's... Isn't it kind of always the way it goes, both men's and women's games in the WCC? You never know if you're going to get a combined 200 or barely a combined 120. There's so many contrasting styles, I feel like. Pretty diverse conference strategy-wise, right? Yeah, I would say so. I, I think that Santa Clara is one of the more balanced teams, but there's a lot of different approaches. 
So that's Tess Heal we were talking about her a minute ago. Definitely going to be the WCC Freshman of the Year this year, and she'll get to the line. A great free throw shooter, their best free throw shooter. Part of the reason why, Connor, is because she's good at it. Other part of the reason, she never leaves the floor. They played Portland two nights back. She played 39 of 40 minutes. The more you're on the floor, the more chances you have to get fouled, I guess. Yeah, she's vital for them. Uh, I think that just is a testament to how much she plays into what they do and their identity. Yeah, she's their best player this year, no doubt about it. And to have her be a true freshman, as long as she wants to stay at Santa Clara, she's uh, she's on her way to being a legend. Yeah, imagine by the time she's a senior and she kind of gets into the, those niches of like understanding, like to she can score in uncomfortable situations, that's going to be huge for her. Inside three to go in the first half. And it feels like the Zags, Connor, are starting to slow it down in offense and run more sets as opposed to transition the last few minutes. Yeah, and I, I think that's a viable choice. You, you need to slow things down a little bit when you have a lead like that. Great pass to Esther Little for two. Zags are just rolling in the assists. That's number 12 in the first half. And really pretty spread out. It's five different players have an assist and three of them have multiple. This is a team that knows how to pass from sets for sure. Jumper will not go down from Pollard and he him the rebound. This is a great no look dish. I think Ejim just wasn't ready for it. Yeah, that was a great look. I, if she's just a little bit more set than I think that's an easy one to go up for. It's a great dump off to Esther Little. First points of the game for her. And here goes Heel. And see, we got Esther ready to double on the block, which is where Heel kind of makes her bread and butter. That was Haraki who tried to put up a three, won't go. Santa Clara, two for 11 from three now. And Haraki is their most consistent shooter. Yeah, she is. She's had 28 threes this year. That's tied for the team lead. Down about a minute to go here in the half. Ejim down low, did it while she was covered. Pushed through the contact, no foul, gets it anyway. Like I said, just the strength. She, When she gets into the paint and she knows that she has the right angle and the right position, it's hard to deny her. Zags back into a double digit lead, they're up 11. Ejim the steal. Six points. She makes it look easy sometimes, and it's really not. No, she plays with passion and aggression, but always with a smile, though, you know? She never makes it look too hard. Like, on that play, it's so hard to not foul there. Speaking of fouls, that's on Esther Little. Fourth of the quarter for GU. She'll go off. Hollingsworth comes back on. Take another look. Man. What an outstanding first half of basketball for this team. Zags by 13. Good looking catch and shoot that time by Haraki, but she's just cold in the first half. Two points. Now one more possession to make something happen, enter the half on a good note. Zags on a 6-0 run to end the first half. And they'll Run a play here with four seconds, trying to get one more. I wonder if you screen off to kick out for a three or if you just go straight into the paint. Zags have made their last three shots. And nearly one more from Eliza Hollingsworth to close out the first half. But you'll take that first half here to the Zags. 41-28, Connor. Man started off really hot. Santa Clara made a push, and Gonzaga punches back. Yeah, they've reasserted themselves, and I think they have some things to look at at halftime. Uh, there's some things that uh, 40A is not going to be thrilled with in that kind of lull in the beginning of the second quarter, but I think they keep doing what they're doing. They're, they're completely fine. 
fun first half, fast first half. We'll talk about their resume, postseason hopes, stats, highlights, and more after the break on the halftime show as the Zags lead by 13 on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, we came into this one knowing that Santa Clara was capable of putting up a fight considering what they nearly did to Portland on Thursday, but man, the Gonzaga Bulldogs pull away at the end of the first half. 41-28, our halftime score as we welcome you back inside the kennel. Greg Talbot, Connor Gilbert with you this afternoon. Connor, Santa Clara had this game back to six points with a couple minutes and a half. What happens? Yeah, at that point, uh, Zags were only shooting 30% in the second half, and they were able to get that back up to 50, end the half on a 6-0 scoring run, and kind of reassert themselves uh, with a little bit slower pace of play, and it's been a little bit more consistent for them. Really fun first half of basketball, even if you're a Santa Clara fan, they're down 13, but they showed real flashes too. Now over to the Zags. Okay, so we are into the point now. I mean. You wouldn't think it because it feels like we just kind of got the season started, but there's not that much time left in the season. We only have, what, a month and a half left, so let's talk about the postseason, although it seems a little premature to do so. Let's talk about this Bulldogs team resume. They're 15-2, and two, undefeated in the WCC. Those neutral wins that weren't home and weren't road were massive. Louisville was ranked number four in the country at that point. Tennessee was top 20, I believe. Since then... They looked great. The one real loss since then was to Stanford, where they only dressed seven players. Since then, they've rattled off eight straight wins, and they lead the WCC in margin of victory. They're not going to have a hard time getting into the tournament. The question is, where are they going to be seated? Yeah, and this is where the WCC becomes kind of amb ambiguous with, like, seeding. We can see, like, they could be predicted to be a five seed. Uh, it depends on really how they finish out, and... Obviously, their AP ranking is probably going to outperform their seed mm. in terms of like how they play at the end of the season. But if they continue to, if they finish the season on a hot note, I feel like it's hard not to reward them with a top four seed. No doubt about it. I think potentially, if BYU were not having a down year, those wins against BYU would probably mean a little bit more than they do now. I think they would be. Uh, that was kind of the benefit of 
the last year's WCC tournament, that win over BYU was huge, and I think it boosted them a bit. Uh, they got a pretty favorable seating, but this year's team is host wholly better than that. Completely agreed. All right, so we have a fun exhibition, kids basketball game happening here at halftime. We're going to take a break. Might show you some highlights from this game when we come back. We're definitely going to show you highlights of what happened in the first half. Zags by 13 at the break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Got a pretty aggressive halftime scrimmage going on here inside the kennel. Uh, Connor, these girls are really good. They're out here. I don't think I was setting screens and running plays when I was seven. No, I was not doing any of that. I think when I was that young, we had wristbands to determine who we were defending. <laughs> you defend a kid with the same color wristband as you. Sir, so. All right, so that was nearly a big highlight. Let's talk about the highlights of the game we're here to watch, though, which is... Gonzaga Santa Clara Bulldogs by 13 at halftime story of the first half was threes they started the game six for eight from downtown ended the first half seven for 13 so still over 50 percent which is amazing yeah. and without attempting a single free throw so far so they really have been able to stabilize the way they've been playing jump out to a big lead and muster a response after heel kind of gets going a bit she started off one for four she's been two for three since then with a pair of free throws Starting to kind of find her rhythm a little bit more, and if Santa Clara has a shot to get back in this game, it's going to be because of that. The Zags were crazy from three. Hollingsworth has one. Kaylin Trong has three. Maxwell's got one. Michaela Williams has one. And Peyton Muma has one. Meanwhile, probable WCC freshman of the year, Tess Heal, finally got going midway through the first half and started to get them back into it. Yeah, uh, she's getting to her spots more. She's been able to take advantage of them not getting back on uh, defense as quickly and trying to jump to that kind of mid-post area where she likes to make her living. Gonzaga's shooting 55% is a team right now. Speaking of stats like that, we'll show you halftime stats coming up on the other, uh, the other end of the break here on the WCC Network on Stadium. Zags by 13.
Halftime in the kennel, number 20, Gonzaga, 41. Santa Clara, 28. This game, at some points, was a nearly 20-point lead for the Bulldogs. At points, it was down to just six as Santa Clara made a push, but late in the first half, Gonzaga pulls away. Let's take a look at how it happened, Connor. Pretty much here, the numbers tell the story, especially looking at the three-point shooting. Yeah, it's honestly impressive that they've been able to keep it to below 20 with the difference in shooting. And uh, they, they've they started to draw more fouls. They've made four free throws in that uh, second, ha uh, second quarter. Uh, there's a bit more movement, and like I said earlier, they're a pretty resilient team, so Gonzaga's going to have to make some adjustments and try to keep playing the same kind of set-based offense and just keep heel as limited as you can. Elsewhere, look at the assists. Are you kidding me? 12 of them in the, in the first half. Yeah, th there's been a lot of just over-the-top looks, just a lot of quick cuts. Uh, they've been pretty efficient with how they've been moving the ball, and they haven't been settling for mid-level shots because they've been able to get the Broncos to move around a lot. Speaking of the Broncos, the tougher thing for them, look at the bottom of your screen. Look at bench points. Nobody who hasn't been in the starting lineup scored for them in the first 20 minutes. That's got to change. And no one outside of Hudgens has really played that many minutes. Uh, Maldonado, Cuddy, and Johnson have all gotten a few minutes, but none of them have really been in the game over three minutes. They're really asking for a lot from their top six. Kaylin Strong leading the Zags in scoring. She's got 11 points. More importantly, shooting four for six from the field. Gonzaga as a team in the first half shot 55%. It's hard to keep that clip, so I think their defense in the second half has got to be vigilant. Yeah, I, and I think that really comes down to those doubles on the block. Uh, keeping Pollard and Edmondson out as well as heel when they drive. Uh, Edmondson likes to kind of assert herself in the, in the paint early, and that kind of puts Gonzaga in a position where they can send that double whenever uh, if someone comes off on the other side. Esther, Esther Little's done a great job of doubling on that, so has Eliza. They, they've been recognizing it pretty quick. The posts have been good about it. Starting five for the Zags in the second half, Michaela Williams will inbound it. Kaylin Trong on the floor, Brenna Maxwell, Avon Ejim, and Eliza Hollingsworth. Big crowd today in the kennel, couple thousand. I would, don't have the number, I'd venture to say we probably got 3,500 people in here, big crowd. It looks pretty full. Maybe 4,000 even. We got the rude sandstorm getting the people going. And here comes Kaylin Trong. Led the team in scoring in the first half. 11 points, four for six from the field. She's been running the show. Michaela Williams. Great first half. She had seven points. Played a strong defense like we talked about at the start of the show. Always so good. Avon Ejim. She'll go to the line early in the half. If she gets that first step on you and she's not scoring, she's probably drawing a foul. Oh, it's over. And I think that's what really allows them to play so inside out. And what, the reason why they can even attempt that many threes is because you can't cheat. Gonzaga's first free throw of the day goes down. They did not get fouled and go to the line at all in the first half. Good news for them. They're the third best, rather the second best free throw shooting team in America. As a squad, they hit 80%. That's second best in the sport. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and it's like I mentioned earlier, they are able to close out games partially because of that. They play a long defensive lineup. Good look by Heel. There's Heel down low. She's finally into double digits, and she's off and running. That's 10 points. Their leading scorer. She needs to be there every game, especially in games like this. She's really a competitor. Like, even even when she was having that rough start, like, it, her body language didn't change. Her approach really didn't change. She's still taking the same shots. She's not shying away, which is, for a freshman, that's really impressive. Yeah, here she comes across the timeline. Just like her facial expression, so composed, yeah. so mature for being a true freshman, you just don't see it. And the difference in speed in the college game, like, that's really notable. Yes. And just the difference in physicality. She's going up against some really uh, strong, experienced post players here. I think it'd be a different story too if she was a six foot or six foot one guard. She's she's five foot ten. There's only so much she can do on defense, but she holds her own. Yeah, she definitely plays bigger than her height. 
Maxwell in the lane. This will be a fourth chance opportunity for the Bulldogs. Strong. Oh, that would have been fun. Foul on the come down. Zag ball. When you keep getting boards like that, you're throwing the whole defense so far out that those, easy, those kickouts become so much easier. Coach 48 a little frustrated. Ejim off the inbound pass. That was not a bad look. I would say more than recently, Connor, the Zags have been more open to the mid-range game today. Yeah, and I, th I think they're recognizing that the, the Santa Clara is sinking in on a lot of those. And you get that high percentage shot right there, you have the shooters to make it work. Ejim. Working on Pollard, trying to get aggressive. Williams sees a lane, took it, no. Man, what a great, great re rebound by Brenna Maxwell. She saw where the shot was going to go before it hit the rim, and she chased it down. So smart. Williams, no foul. And good job by Ejim clearing out the paint for, uh, for Eliza and Michaela, too. And this team has really hit their stride the last couple of weeks if you're a Bulldogs fan. I mean, they've been in stride most of the year, but something just extra clicked Great. in the last few weeks as Hollingsworth takes it away, stuffs it up to Williams. Yes. That's a beautiful Tron play, too. Getting, getting out of some pressure and then looking straight ahead. We're just starting the second half. That's 13 assists for this team. And the crazy thing, they've been so hot lately, but really, uh, they're still an incomplete team. They haven't had Mount Hybens for a few games, and she's their biggest player. Williams again underneath. <laughs> Timeout Broncos. Bill Carr's going to have some things to talk about. Santa Clara scored one basket early in the second half. Then they didn't score again for two and a half minutes. And they want a timeout. We'll take a break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Zag starting the second half red hot thanks to Michaela Williams. That was sick. Well, if the story of the first half for the Zags was the three-point shooting, story of the start of the second half has been takeaways and then a great pass to Michaela Williams. It happened twice. Yeah, the Zags up to 14 assists already. Uh, Kaylin Trong has six of them. They're killing it, no doubt about it. Tess Heal, meanwhile, for Santa Clara, finally got warmed up. She's got 10 points. Only one in double figures, though. Everyone else sitting at, I don't know, four or five. For what it's worth, Santa Clara, still no points off the bench. It's been their starters that have scored all 30. Hollingsworth. The Zags had slowed down on three-point shooting. They've been trying to get it going again the last minute. 
Hollingsworth, second time's the charm. That's eight three-pointers. And people are gonna start chanting for tacos in a few seconds. We're getting close. In one of the fun basketball traditions in the Pacific Northwest, they don't do it anymore for whatever reason as Egypt doesn't get whistled for a foul there, I guess. Jesus. Close. Trailblazers games back in the day, you'd get chalupas with, with three points, wait, they had 100 points? And the whole stadium would just start chanting, chalupa, chalupa. They don't do it anymore. It makes me sad. We need, to, we need to get the folks here to start chanting once we get to nine. I'm sure they will. I've heard we want tacos chants in here before. Yeah. Santa Clara ball. We got Muma coming in to give Trong some rest. But that's the crazy thing, too. They haven't had Kaylee Trong for pretty much this entire run since November. It's been a while. That's eight three pointers. Tacos coming up. Unless something goes horribly wrong in the next 15 minutes. Another takeaway. They've been coming fast and furious in the second half. Yeah, you're right, Connor. With the exception of the in-transition fast breaks, they have really made a concerted effort to slow it down. Yeah, you, you can see even there, like, Ejim probably could have gone up to the rack and found some kind of kick out, but I, I think that they've been coached to relax a bit and slow things down and work with the lead they have. That was a good-looking shot for Maldonado. Why not? Maxwell does not hesitate to shoot. I've, I, I've Such have a not fast seen, release. I've, and it's so smooth, too. Uh, there will be shots that are contested, and the release doesn't really look like it's contested at all. Foul on the Zags. Maxwell. And that'll take us down to the media timeout here in the third quarter. Bulldogs still holding on to a lead. It was only 13 at halftime. You do the math. It's up to 17 now on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, this game is not done yet for the Bulldogs, ranked right? number 20 in the country this week, but starting to get more comfortable. Approaching the end of the third quarter, they're up 17 on Santa Clara. Luckily for them next weekend, only one game. Unluckily, it's against the team they are tied with for first place in the WCC, also 5-0 Portland, Connor. Yeah, and Portland has improved so much. I feel like Portland's ascent really started in that uh, 2020 WCC tournament where yeah. they upset Gonzaga and they've yep. improved every year and become a lot more consistent with like their approach. No question about it. That game is going to be huge. Watch that one. If you're watching this one on the WCC network, make sure you're there for that one. That's going to be a blast. The rare three finally goes down today for Santa Clara. That was the junior Anna Johnson. Only the third one they've made out of 14 they've taken. Zags, meanwhile, have made eight. Ten, you get tacos. So one more goes down. We'll start hearing taco chants in a few minutes. 
It's taken away by Santa Clara. Chase down. Brenna Maxwell there to recover. And, and she'll it, do the rest. And if you're Santa Clara, you don't really need to rush that there. Gonzaga's practically back already. I think you just got to bring that one up normally and go into your sets. Great work to feed down low, Edmondson. She's in a low-key good game. Yeah, and they, they saw that she had an advantage in the paint. She has Muma, who's the smallest player on the court, on her, and that's, that's the kind of looks that you need to get to immediately. Maxwell, three. Man, she almost got fouled and took it and went. So she'll go to the line. That was, what, an inch short of going in? It was just a little short. Her confidence is really impressive. She can take pretty much any kind of shot beyond the arc she wants. She's one of the best three-point shooters in America. Well, she is the best percentage-wise. She's also the best free throw shooter in the country. 47 for 48 this year now, just automatic. The Zags knew they were going to be lucky Connor by getting her, but she's turned into one of the best players in the WCC. Yeah, she was all Pac-12 at Utah, so it's no surprise, but she's really stepped up and gotten a lot more out of her minutes this year. And like I said, the confidence has been huge for her. She's become one of the pivotal parts of this team and pivotal parts of probably one of the highest scoring offenses that Gonzaga's had on the women's side. So after those three free throws, that'll have taken her over 98%. She came into the game at 97.9. Great mid-range look from Haraki. She needs to get a little bit more dialed in on those switches. Well, she's been trying to get going, but I think she's forced up a couple that were just not natural shots. Yeah, and that's kind of been the story for Santa Clara this whole time. I mean, only the three or four assists so far in this game while Gonzaga is already on the double digits. Yeah, the last that. break, Santa Clara had three assists. The Bulldogs had 15, and there's Ejim. Nine points. Down low. What is it with Karate Kid sweep the leg accidentally? <laughs> That's on Egypt. Take another look. Man, that was good stuff. We had an awfully fast first two quarters of basketball. Definitely slowed down and gotten a little quieter here in the third. And that's definitely to Gonzaga's advantage. How so? I, I just think that in terms of like keeping your lead where it's at and not making risky plays. Ejim, 11 points and no surprise. Efficient again, five for 10 from the field. So good that way, huh? Hudgens, three. Starting to heat up. Starting to get going, that's her first three of the game. Santa Clara as a team is heating up at least. They made four of their last five shots. Yeah, they weren't gonna be held to that percentage for the whole game, but Gonzaga does need to tighten up a little bit on getting the closing out on those. The Bulldogs do have the best defense in the WCC. They only allow 55 points per game. Santa Clara at this pace is going to beat that. Muma, it's a good looking shot. They're starting to put up threes. That was yeah. Cuddy. Santa, Santa Clara speeding up. L like I mentioned, like Santa Clara needs this to be a little bit quicker if they want to make up any kind of deficit. Three points is more than two. Gage him to the bench for GU. Hits double figures. Take a break, you earned it. Zags holding on to a 14 point lead. Sixteen, rather. Not a math guy. English teacher, Connor. What can I say? 
Inside a minute to go in the quarter, stolen away. Hudgens is starting to come alive here in the third. Great dump oh. off to Heal. Saving the play for GU. Yeah. Gonzaga is battling for those boards and those loose balls on this side, and Santa Clara is taking advantage by punishing them on the other end. I'd say story of the third quarter here is Santa Clara's threes finally starting to go down. Maldonado, ooh, that was a good one. Put back is good. Out of position on the board. Now it's a 14 point lead. I mean, so this is why I say that Santa Clara is pretty resilient. There's a lot of teams that would get up to that nearly 20 point deficit range, and it's easy to check out. And I think they have a lot of confidence in their the way they play. That's a foul on Hudgens. And that is a foul, but they're doing a good job of getting to distributors and giving them a harder time than they were. Uh, Gonzaga was moving the ball so easily in the first half. Maxwell back in, Stokes to the bench. Nine and a half seconds to get a shot off for GU. Hollingsworth looking for Maxwell around a screen, finds Williams instead, she gets fouled. Bulldogs the second best free throw shooting team in America. 80%. And would you look at that? Today is a team. They are four for five. That's 80%. He is a math guy. Uh, that's a fourth grade math guy. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you don't hire me to teach math, that's for sure. Here's Williams. Got him. Time for one more shot in the quarter from SCU. Heel. Launched it a little bit hard. That's the end of three. Bulldogs hanging on to a nice lead, bigger than it was at halftime. Good third quarter for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Good transitions, good passing. It's a good all-around game, a lot of teamwork, pretty basketball. Come back for the last 10 minutes of it after this on the WCC Network on the stadium. Back to start the fourth quarter on the WCC Network. And man, oh man, it's funny, Connor, how life works, right? You, you start the game. We were talking about how great Michaela Williams has been on defense. There she is on the left side of your screen. A real force tonight offensively, 13 points. Yeah, and she's not really doing anything. She's not taking control. She's just taking what's given to her and uh, capitalizing on uh, teams are on Santa Clara uh, focusing on e -gym and a lot of other posts. She's able to make those cuts and take advantage of defensive miscues. Good looking shot that time. Won't go down for Maldonado. I appreciate the fact that she keeps trying today. And the quality of shots is has definitely improved since the first half. They were definitely forcing it a lot more trying to get something going and I, I think they've kind of realized that they can still settle in and try to take advantage of Gonzaga not getting back quick enough. Here's Trong. 
He gave her a nice rest at the end of the third quarter considering how good she's been. Draws the foul, she'll go to the line. And a lot of that credit goes to Muma too for being able to play well enough that she can sit. Yeah, Peyton Muma, for her first year actually playing on this team has made it easier on Kaylin Trong with her sister Hurt, no doubt. Look, look at the top of your screen there. Still injuries for this team. Kaylee Trong is still out with the leg. Bree Salenbein, we are told, is starting to practice with GU, but not ready to play yet, clearly. Still waiting on Mott Hybens. Nice, easy play in the lane for Haraki. So Gonzaga still shorthanded. The question is, Connor, say Salenbein is, is ready to go again. Now, she hasn't played this year. Would you rather just take the red shirt? That's a hard choice because I think it really depends on how much better she's gotten since she was a freshman. Uh, WCC Freshman of the Week uh, last year. And she's had some moments where her shooting and her length are so valuable. But that's also, those are things that Gonzaga is not really short on at the moment. Well, and no, not with Maxwell and Williams. Burton the rebound. That's going to be a, quite the call for Coach Fortier to make. Down low, Stokes gets her own rebound, goes back up, no. Third chance, Hollingsworth gets the foul. And reintroducing Kaylee Trong into the lineup whenever she's ready is also kind of interesting, too, because you don't know how much it changes the dynamic to bring in another guard. Obviously, with how good she's been, it's hard not to imagine them improving and being able to the Trongs being able to spell out each other, point guard. Good shot by Liza. But the pessimist in me always wonders, like, does it mess with the team's mojo to reintroduce such an important player late in the season? That's a good question. Salenbein would be especially helpful next year to know that you've got another three years of her if you've got to have a different look if the Trongs leave. However... In this COVID era, Kaylee and Kaylin could come back for a fifth year, no questions asked. Absolutely. And Gonzaga, I think if they get both of them back, it's hard to not see them as a top 10 team in preseason. Yeah, the only player they're definitely going to lose is Britta Maxwell. Everyone else, everyone else is eligible, everyone else is back. And Salenbein is the real deal. She was a five-star recruit. Oh, the highest recruited player in program history. Yeah. And she has a lot of big time skills and she really plugs into the lineup in a lot of different ways. If Maxwell's coming back next year too, this would be a top five team. And I mean that. That would be a filthy team. If only. Good three from That's <laughs> Maldonado. Love that she keeps shooting. Good for her. And that's like you mentioned how diverse their amount of shooters are. You see a lot of other people getting into their rhythm now. Stokes. Great Way drive. to get around the defense. Nice move. She knows what she's doing. First points of the game. Played more of a supporting role this afternoon off the bench. And a foul. We talk about how strong Yvonne is, but Callie is a really physical guard too, and that's why she's valuable on defense. Great move. Saw the angle, took it. She made it look easy too. That was pretty, a lot of flow. She's a high upside player. I, I think we're just starting to see how good she can be in the uh, next couple years. She's going to be a big part of what they do. The, the trio of Muma, Salenbein, and Stokes together is going to be great. Yeah, it, it's all three of them are high upside and it, it's it's really going to be interesting to see how they factor into what they do yeah and esther little also their age so she's coming in to her own more as a player currently more on the defensive side but i think what's fun about watching this year's team is yeah they're number 20 in the country yeah they're great and there's a lot of upside now it's also fun to see the understudies growing into leading roles as the year goes on and that's a lot of players on this team we saw that process happen like eliza was not getting as nearly as many minutes as she does now, and now she's one of the most important players on this roster. Uh, the just score. Off the hands of Egypt. 
Ejim was on the sixth woman, obviously sixth woman of the year in WCC. I think that's where she was valuable. Yep. It wasn't for lack of her skill, but now you see her as one of the anchors of this team, one of the people who gets it done. She carried the team against Tennessee late. This Zags team, I, you could honestly, theoretically make the case that three of the five on the first team WCC at the end of the year should be Zags. Will it work out that way? Probably not, but it could. And earlier in the season, I thought that if they went up enough in the rankings as they have in the past with a strong showing in WCC play, I was thinking Yvonne could viably be on that list of National Player of the Year, like watch list. But well, so let's think about it even just for first team WCC at the end of the year in case we have any voters watching whose minds we can maybe sway. <laughs> let's just go through the starting lineup here. Well, actually, let's start with the sensational player who's at the free throw line. Britta Maxwell. The best free throw shooter in America. She's only missed one this year. Still automatic. She's also the best three-point shooter in America. How can you not have her be first team? Yeah, you can't deny her that. She's definitely the best shooting guard in the conference. But you look at the numbers that Kaylin puts up too, and then you can't deny her either. And Yvonne, like all three of them, I think have been instrumental, and they've all had huge games at different times. Those three, no doubt about it. And I think you could even make a case for Eliza Hollingsworth. Oh, for sure. So you're talking about four that now, again, the good news for the WCC is the first team is 10 players, right? So it's not just, it's not like the All-Americans. It's not just five, it's 10. I think there's a really good chance you see four out of ten of those are Zags this year. Yeah, and if Eliza's not first team, then she's definitely second team. But at this point, Kaylin Trong especially considered what she was asked to do with her sister being hurt. She just becomes so much more composed. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know what, Michaela Williams, defensive player of the year? I could see that. I could see that. I think if the numbers bear out in her favor, then that's, that's a good case to make. And definitely Tess Heal, you know, she's got our endorsement for freshman of the year, no doubt. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. And she's not really having a premier game for her right now, but she's still being aggressive. She's still asserting herself. Like, they, they still have to worry about her for the rest of this game. And she might get to her season average. She averages 16 and a half. She's got 12 right now. Although she had 23 against Portland the other night, and that's really... More the performance she was hoping for today. Yeah. Great defense by Edmondson there on the block. That's a foul, Edmondson. It's hard to deny Yvonne twice. It's not going to happen. Especially when you're out of position, trying to box out. Oh, man, what a great play. Little down low. That was going to set up to be a beautiful three for Maxwell. I'm going to be amazed if wave it off, Bulldog ball. We've only got five minutes left. I, it, it seemed like a lock that we were going to hit double-digit three-pointers today here in the kennel and have tacos for everyone, but the Zags have seemingly stopped shooting three-pointers, so maybe no tacos. Wouldn't that be something? That would, that would be something. I mean, if you, what do you, they had six in the first quarter. That's insane. But they're being a little bit more conservative with the, how they're moving around the offense. They're okay with taking time and working inside out. I think threes that they're going to be taking from here on out are generated by issues with Santa Clara's defense. Well, after, that like hot that. Start, after the hot start, the Zags were two for, two for 13. Now they're two for 14 on their last 14 threes. So it really slowed down. Foul down low. And Edmondson not happy. That'll take us down into a timeout. Gonzaga still hanging on to a 15-point lead here in the kennel. I'll put a bow on this one after the break on the WCC Network on Stadium. Thank you again.
All right, back inside the kennel. Bulldogs up to 70 points. You know, there was a point in this game, Connor, where we thought this is going to be an absurdly high-scoring game. Still turned out to be pretty good for the offenses. Yeah, they're, they're still getting done what they need to do. But, yeah, those video game numbers from the first quarter uh, have definitely fallen back down to earth. Those were never going to keep up. Good passing. Maxwell, such a quick release. It feels like they want the tacos. They're putting shots up. They, they wouldn't deny the people that. Give the people what they want. Of course. A lot of candidates for our player of the game award tonight. One of them, the star who just got the rebound, Brenna Maxwell. 14 points. Undefeated from the free throw line, of course. The reason it's hard today is the Zags have four players in double digits. They, they've been really balanced today. They, that's one of their benefits is that they can, they don't have to pick one player that they go to. Yvonne can be that player and so can Kaylin, but when they're controlling games like this, er, everything is pretty balanced. In terms of scoring, Ejim's got 11. Trong's got 15. Maxwell, 14. Michaela Williams, 13. Nice easy move down low. That was heel. Up to 14 points. Slipped by her. And she's sneaky down there. She's not even tall. She's 5'10". She's just so good at finding angles and kind of getting under you. Yeah, she's great at that rocker step, going like she's going to spin around one way and then slipping by on the overcommit. Maxwell. Williams. Trying to give the people what they want. All right, so not necessarily done yet, but it would take a Herculean effort from Santa Clara at this rate to make up a 13-point lead in three minutes. It happens. Uh, Connor, I know you watched the last couple Santa Clara games to get ready for this one. You watched them play well against Portland, but they lost. Uh, your thoughts on their effort today? I think it's been a better effort than against Portland in terms of keeping their consistency and composure the whole way. Uh, the shooting's not on their side, and Heal hasn't had the kind of game that she did in that last game. But this is a good WCC team. This is an upper half WCC team in a league that's going to have a lot of parity behind Gonzaga and Portland. That was Edmondson again, kind of accidentally knocked Hollingsworth to the ground. Now, I think you're right. Does it definitely Gonzaga Portland for the moment? USF clear number three? I wouldn't even say clear. I think that three through six is, there's a lot of teams that we need to see them play each other twice to know really sure. what they can bring. Sure. Because USF barely beat the Santa Clara team. It's kind of a heartbreaker. Santa Clara was really playing well in that game. Great pass to the corner. That's a tough one, rounding off. Bronco ball. Got quiet in here just because the game got quiet the last few minutes. But look at that crowd, man. We're probably around 4,000 in here today. So fun when that happens in WCC play. One of the best women's basketball atmospheres on the West Coast. No, sure. no doubt about it. There are times when it's one of the best in the country. Oh, absolutely. Hold on, Tyler. That's on Hollingsworth. Four on the Zags in the fourth quarter, five on the Broncos. Looking for the inbound. Pollard down low. Triple team. Swarm. That wasn't going to happen. Gets the foul. Fans not loving that call. Yeah, listen to the crowd. The first challenge was clean, but it's it's hard to avoid contact when you got when you got three players coming up like that. Sure. Maxwell back in, Hollingsworth out, that might be it for her. Zags have gone cold though. Zags haven't scored in three and a half minutes, they're one of their last ten shooting. But they still lead by 13, maybe it doesn't matter, I guess we'll find out. Still controlling the pace pretty well. Well, at this point, as long as you control the clock, you're not going to blow it, right? Yeah. But here comes the press. Yeah, I was going to say, here they come. I 
Wonder if they wish they had done that a little sooner. They could have. They they were content to harass guards up top, and I I think that that could have been good for them if they had gotten in this a little bit earlier. Two minutes left is kind of late, right? It's yeah. Late. Strong. No. Oh falling. man, Egypt went after that one hard, and again it's Edmondson. Man, she's just around a lot of bodies today. Ouch. That's, that's Lara Edmondson's fourth. Really the only player to be in foul trouble this whole game. It's been a low fouling game. She's been aggressive for sure. Hudgens has three. Zags are 12 for 13. 13 for 14 from the line. 93% free throw clip for them. That'll keep him number two in the country today. Good stuff. All right, so that's a good effort from Santa Clara, like you were just saying, Connor, for the Zags. Boy, I would say they need this game just in terms of it, it, it feels like a lot of the time it's one or two players for the Zags who really go off. I think it's even more fun for this team when it's four or five that do. Yeah. It's nice to show their balance. Yeah, it, it's definitely a good thing for them coming into WCC play. Because that's one of the things with a lot of mid-tier WCC teams that have players like Heal, who you know that they're going to be the focal point. And Gonzaga doesn't really have that. They have like three focal points. And it's hard to shut out all three of them, especially when you have Kaylin like shooting the way she does. and being able to get rest. Down inside two minutes. Cuddy, no. Strong the rebound. Man, she's been so great tonight, 15 points. She's smiling as she carries the ball up the court. There we go. We've got a minute 40 left. And one more three-pointer to get the tacos. Broke up a pretty rough three-shooting spell there. They're going to have, what, probably probably two more chances. Zags have it in the bag. The question is, are the people going to get those Taco Bell tacos? We'll run a set, maybe. No, Vani just wants the two. Well, she'll get a three-point play, just not a three-pointer. Good looking. Michaela Williams to the bench. What a great game for her. 13 points, six boards, a couple of assists. Burton back in for GU. Peyton Muma in, Ejim out, that'll be it. Crowd happy with today's game. And why not? Been impressed with Mariah Hudgens' effort today. Yeah, she's definitely helped hide over some rough shooting patches for them. Over to Little. Been impressed with her defense today. And the Zags will start to run this one out. Maybe one last shot. Maxwell will take the out. And that'll probably be it. Maybe the Zags will have one more, but it looks like against all odds, we may end this game with no tacos for the people, Connor. Bad news. You hate to see that. You hate to see I it. I would love to see Muma chuck up a three, but I'm sure that 40A is telling she, her to slow things down. She was looking at the coach saying, can I do it? Yeah, 40A is. She's saying, no, don't you dare. Muma smiles. She knew the answer before she looked at her, too. They'll run it down. Bulldogs have won nine in a row. Final score this afternoon, the Bulldogs 78, Broncos 78. Broncos 61. The Bulldogs have won nine in a row. Maybe they can sneak up even higher than 20 in next week's standings. 
Yeah, at this point in the season, it just depends on who around them are losing, and we're in a really a tough part of conference play for a lot of Power 5 teams. Uh, there's definitely going to be opportunities. Uh, there always is. Well, that was a fun one today, no doubt about it. Both teams, I would say, acquitted themselves pretty well. I think Santa Clara would have liked to finish, I don't know, down 10 or 11. Let's take a look at our player of the game today. Yeah, it's, it, there were a lot of choices. It's Michaela Williams. Absolutely. Uh, she held heel below her season average, uh, especially in that first half. They couldn't really get going because heel wasn't firing. Uh, when heel was scoring, uh, it typically wasn't on Williams, and she's found more of an offensive role in this game too. She really did. She excelled in transition. Here she is. I think it was back-to-back -back plays or twice in a couple of minutes. She's great on those cuts. Made some threes. Made some mid-range jumpers, really good stuff. I think, what, five or six assists, really impressive game from Michaela, uh, and she is our player of the game today. Fun afternoon, everyone's happy. All right, so Connor, this is a fun one. Uh, Portland, the Portland Pilots await. That is going to be one of the two biggest games of the year in conference play for this team. The second biggest of which will be when Portland comes here in February. Yeah, the, both of those are going to determine the WCC regular season champion, barring some kind of unforeseen circumstance. Uh, Portland is a really improved team, and I'm interested to see how Gonzaga matches up with them. I, I think that they have a lot of shooters who can contend with Gonzaga, and they like Gonzaga has a lot of lengthy players too, but Portland, that's one of their assets as well. I know you have watched Portland on film this year. For those of us who maybe haven't gotten a chance to see the pilots yet, what are they like? Uh, I just think that they are really experienced. Uh, as experienced, if not more, than Gonzaga. They have a lot of players who've been around. And I just very composed. Uh, I think that they have a lot of confidence in this year coming in. It's come from those last two seasons of success. And they really want to beat Gonzaga. That, that's the benchmark in the WCC. No doubt about it. Uh, our thoughts on today's game. Bunch of zags in double figures. Also importantly, I know we didn't really talk about this during the broadcast, but I think it's a good thing to wrap up our game the night with. In terms of margin of victory stats, the Bulldogs are the best there is in the conference. Their average margin of victory is what? 16 points. The next best in the conference is BYU, which is, I think, 9 points. So not only are the zags continuing to win, they're continuing to win big. Yeah, and that, like we talked about earlier, they have such a strong closing lineup. Uh, they really, it's pretty airtight. They play good defense. They can draw fouls, make their free throws at a crazy clip. And the shooting can pretty much get them out of anything. They're able to really settle down and just hold the other teams off and build on their lead late. Let's talk about what is coming up next for the Bulldogs. So like we said, the Portland Pilots, right? Then Pacific should be an easy enough win for them at this point. St. Mary's. They're always actually a tough out in women's basketball. People don't really know that, but even though they're not the best in the conference, they'll usually give you a really good game. Yeah, they're a well-coached team, and I think they play well at home. They also have a great atmosphere. It's going to be, that's going to be one of the closer ones, I'm sure. I think so. Then we're back here on the 26th against LMU, and then Pepperdine. We have a couple stats to show you at the end of our game here today in just a second. Man, the field goal percentage got closer than it should have. It definitely did. Uh, Santa Clara really kind of came back and settled down and started doing things that they are sustainable. Sadly, no tacos for the people. The Bulldogs, after starting six for eight from three, only end nine for 26 from downtown. Elsewhere, the assists. Man, that was the tail of the tape, but it wasn't all in transition. The Zags picked up a lot of great assists just in half-court sets. Yeah, and look at that offensive rebound statistic, too. Uh, they were able to extend possessions and keep Santa Clara from holding on to the ball. All right, that's going to do it for us today from Spokane. That was a fun one. Bulldogs started hot. Broncos gave him a game in the first half. But in the second half, it was never less than 10 points, and it was all GU. So for Connor Gilbert and the rest of our broadcast crew here today in the Lilac City, I'm Greg Talbot saying thank you for joining us. Good night. Bulldogs win. And we'll see you next time on the WCC Network on Stadium.